Ladies and gentlemen, the man making dreams come true, General Manager Steve Kime with us on the set right now. Yeah. Now that the dust is settled, my friend, how do you grade how this draft shaped up for you guys? Well, I'm exhausted, number one, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I think it, not only did we fill a bunch of needs, uh, which isn't the purpose of the NFL draft, it's, it's to take your organization and, and sort of catapult it forward. And there's no doubt, in, in my opinion, and the people in our draft room, that uh, not only did we fill a bunch of needs, but uh, we brought in a bunch of players that are going to make sure that we have a tremendous amount of success moving forward. Steve, other than Kyler Murray, of course, in the first round, is there one guy that kind of stands out to you, one guy that really intrigues you and you can't wait to see what he might be able to bring to the table? Well, I mean, I think it would be Zach Allen, the third round pick, and just off the top of my head, uh, the intensity that he plays with, the motor that he has, uh, almost every snap is like his last, and that's really what it's all about. I mean, for a defensive lineman to have 100 tackles, is, is phenomenal. I don't know that I've scouted a guy that's had that type of production. Uh, he's disruptive on every snap, uh, plays with great technique, and uh, at the end of the day has, has the kind of character we want in our locker room. Let's talk a little bit about what went into selecting Kyler Murray number one overall. A bit of an unorthodox decision, I think, to the, the outsiders. A lot of speculation leading up to the draft that made it very exciting when you guys were on the clock. But now that the smoke has sort of cleared a little bit, when were you personally convinced that he was going to be your guy? And when do you think he knew that he was your guy? Well, I, w I was extremely reluctant to even watch the tape because I didn't want to fall in love with, with the player. Really? Yeah. but. Uh, I wanted it to be organic as well. Uh, Michael and I sat down and we talked about it. Uh, we, we are not going to be in this position again. So we have to make the, the most of the opportunity. Uh, and there's no doubt as we went through the process, uh, our scouts looked at the players, our coaches looked at the players. I had a chance to evaluate them. Uh, it was crystal clear in the end that Kyler Murray was the guy. And I said this in the press conference that uh, in the 20 plus years I've been scouting, I've seen guys who can run it like him, can throw it like him. I haven't seen this type of combination from a skill set standpoint. Based on what you just said, Steve, what is your expectation for him? What, wait, what kind of expectation can there be for a rookie quarterback that comes in the league like Kyler Murray? Clear and, and simple, and that's to win football games. Uh, and, and I think he can do it right away. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he is a fierce competitor, number one. And number two, his feet can get him out of trouble, which is obviously a prerequisite for that position nowadays. Uh, and his ability to throw with accuracy and timing and touch. And he has a great ability to see the field with his progression and his reads. So we're extremely excited. You traded Josh Rosen to the Miami Dolphins this afternoon. Do you have any regrets on how the Rosen situation unfolded? And if you could go back in time and change anything, would you? No. No, I mean, uh, this is a tough business. Uh, Josh is, is a real pro. He's handled it with, uh, with great dignity. Uh, we have to make tough decisions in our business. At the end of the day, uh, we have a job to do, and that's to make this organization as good as we can. Can you talk a little bit about your free agents and some of the free agents that you signed? Is there one that really stands out to you, a guy you personally like signing the most? Well, we're still in that process. With, I mean, the ink isn't dry yet, so we're still going through the, the necessary uh, uh, signings right now. Uh, I mean, we had 11 picks. Can you, can you give me time to soak that? <laughs> you got the names memorized yet? Yeah, I mean, today was a full draft. We had seven picks today, and, and our scouts did a fantastic job. That's the one thing that really goes, I think, unappreciated with NFL organizations. These guys are on the road almost 200 days a year. Uh, it's a selfless job. They're, they're away from their families, and they make a lot of sacrifices uh, for us. And Michael and I just talked on the way in here how much we appreciate those guys. Steve, social media can be such a dangerous thing, and I'd like to assess a bit of an elephant in the room that I think a lot of people are probably wondering about. The latest on the Patrick Peterson situation, there was some stuff that unfolded, some strange things on social media last week. I'd like to use this chance to sort of clear the air about his standing within the organization right now. It's funny you say that because I'm not real certain where some of those reports came yeah. from. In fact, uh, Pat and I have talked a couple times this week, had good conversation. Matter of fact, right after the first selection, uh, Pat was my first text. No kidding. Absolutely. So the Byron Murphy pick had nothing to do whatsoever with Patrick Peterson or the status of no. Patrick Peterson. No, it, it, um, it was the best player available, which has been our philosophy all along. And Byron was a guy who uh, actually was, was graded in the top 10 of our, of yeah. our draft selections. So we were extremely uh, excited about him, not only just to be a local product, but to be a guy that uh, we coveted so much. Uh, he really kind of reminds us of a guy named Leon Hall who came out of Michigan mm -hmm. years ago and had a tremendous career. He has the ability to play on, he can play off, he's got great suddenness in transition. Mm. So we're extremely, extremely excited about Byron Murphy. 
Are there any bonus points for being a local product? Because one way or another, you guys have sort of compiled a list of guys that have a ton of Arizona ties. Well, there's no doubt if all things being equal, we're going to stay with the hometown kid. And uh, it, it really is exciting to have guys like Christian Kirk. And if you think about our last two draft picks in the second round, they were teammates of uh, Byron Murphy's, uh, one at Texas A&M and one in, uh, one in high school. So, uh, or I'm sorry, at University of Washington in Buda Baker. So we had intimate knowledge of Byron and uh, we're really excited of what he can do because he can play inside as well, Wolf. He can mm -hmm. play the nickel position for us. So he's got a lot of versatility. All right, let's get some questions from the fans. Lisa, who do we got? Fans ready to get some questions in. First, your name and where you're from. Jackson Wright from Mesa. All right, what's your question for Kime? Uh, my question is, you know, you drafted a lot of players. You said 11 players drafted. How soon before we see a real impact on the field and, and wins? So as a fan, that's what we want to see. We want to see those wins. Well, unfortunately, a 3-13, and 13, I believe, immediately. And that was the whole goal in mind. <laughs> uh, uh, but but we, we feel like the one thing we really addressed this, this uh, draft was playmakers. Uh, a lot of guys on the perimeter that can do a lot of different things. Uh, in fact, the first, the sixth, and the eighth most productive players at wide receiver in college football uh, are draft selections of ours. Uh, Cliff and I had joked, and uh, we had a good laugh with Michael in the, in the uh, draft room. It's sort of like Frisbee dogs in this offense. A bunch of guys running around making plays, leaping and catching the football. It's going to be an exciting brand of offense at uh, State Farm Stadium. Emily Grimsman from Phoenix, Arizona. And what is your question? I'd like to know, how have you seen your career flourish within the Arizona organization? Well, that's a great question, Emily. So uh, Michael and I, when we interview different people and we go through the process of new hires um, or even draft selections for that matter, uh, being a, a, a person who has grown within this organization and started the ground level, it, it really brings um, a lot of self-satisfaction, a lot of pride. You know, whereas maybe if I was a GM for another organization that I started somewhere differently, um, it, it really means something to me. So obviously every decision we make and the fact that, you know, I want to see this organization win a championship and have success is really from within the heart. All right, we have a super fan here. Your name <laughs> and where you're from? Jenny Rodriguez from uh, North Phoenix. My question for you is, do you have in your mind a number that drive us what is the probability to be in playoffs this season wow that's a mm. tough question <laughs> putting you on the spot um, you know what I, I will say this uh no different from in 2013 when michael gave me the opportunity to be general manager uh we never want to use the word rebuild we're going for it every year and that's no different this year uh, then we went from five wins to ten wins and then eleven and then we took a step back after the 13 win season and but but we're never going to lay it up sort of like tin cup we're always going to go for it and that's the mindset we have to have and it's not fair to you as fans that that uh, that we wouldn't go for it every year you guys pay hard-earned money and uh, we want to put a, a product on the field you're happy with all right we have a former quarterback here with a hard-hitting question for you time <laughs> frank voice maricopa uh, question you talked about uh, i wanted you to elaborate on need versus uh, best available player if you could just maybe elaborate on that a little bit yeah I think you know philosophically it's it's simple in that uh, the NFL draft is in is in uh, in April and your needs are always changing uh, so when your needs in April are one thing by the time you get to October through attrition or whatever it may be uh, they always change but you can never have enough good players you can never have enough depth so that's the mindset that we take we never want to reach and leave a better player on the board because in the end it'll come back and bite you in the end All right, final question from our fans here your name and where you're from Frank Gonzalez the third North Phoenix what is your question obviously you took a plethora of wide receivers and offensive talent is that predicated on the offense that you're going to be running or and I guess the next question, how many wide receivers do you think you're going to keep on the roster? Well, that's a great question as well. I would say probably six is the, uh, is the number that we'll uh, tentatively keep. And, and it's not just the offense. It was the fact that the board fell to us that way. There was great value in those picks. And, and we all saw our offense last year. We finished dead last. We needed playmakers. And that's simply what we did. You know, our tight end, even in the seventh round, led college football 
in, in, uh, in yards, 965 yards, I believe, for a tight end, which is, is, is amazing. But we needed guys who could do different things outside. They all came in different shapes and sizes. Hakeem Butler's huge, Isabella's smaller and explosive. We know Keyshawn Johnson can do different things, whether it's the Z or the X spot. To me, one of the most natural route runners in this draft. So really excited what we've added in terms of weapons to go with Larry and guys like Christian. And we all know what David Johnson can do out of the backfield. So Steve, go ahead and talk a little bit about what is next for you now the draft is over, the undrafted free agent signing period of rookies, right? I, did, right. I would imagine that is Tell, take us through that process and tell us a little bit about that. Well, our rookies will come in in two weeks for the rookie mini camp, but, uh, but there's no time to rest. And, and that's, that's our mindset is we want to stay aggressive. If there's going to be any opportunities out there in free agency, and we've done it in the past where we've signed guys late in the process, whether it's been John Abraham in August, uh, 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 Jermaine Gresham in August, we will continue to monitor free agency uh, and guys that may be out there that are looking for a home that may be over or underestimated the market and uh, are looking for a home and there's no doubt that we know because of the Valley and because of this organization and all the great things we have to add, we have a chance to recruit and sell it to players. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for your general manager, Steve Kahn, for coming up.